So before we wrap up this section on service fabric inter service communication, let's go back and change from a named partition to a uniform int64 partition to see how the communication works with these numbers rather than with strings. So let's delete this. Let's create a new uniform 64 partition section. And we need to give it a partition count. So we'll just give it a partition count of three. And we need to give it a high key and a low key. So just like we discussed in the previous video, we give it a high key of two and a low key of zero. And we could get these values from our parameters up here, but to speed up the process here, we're just going to hard code these values in our default services section of the application manifest. So let's go back to our API. Because we've changed how the service is partitioned, we need to change how our service that's communicating with the stateful service, aka the API service, how that creates its service proxy. So back in the communication controller, it's no longer valid to pass this string when we're creating our service partition key. So this means we now have to change this to a number. So we'll call it int, and we might have this as say a product ID. And here the product ID could be any number. So we could just pass this product key directly here but because we've only three partitions, if you were to give this API a product ID of four or anything greater, an exception will be thrown. So in order to get around this, one strategy we might follow is we might have a variable called partition ID, and we simply get the product ID, and we get the mod of three of that. So this means that every product ID we request, it will be kind of rooted to a different partition. So the first product ID of zero will be rooted to the first partition, product ID of two will be rooted to the second, product ID of three will be rooted to the third, and then we'll go back around again. So every fourth product ID will be rooted to uh, the same partition. So as long as the product IDs are evenly distributed, we should have our products evenly distributed across our partitions. So let's put that partition as our service partition key, and let's run our service again and see what we get. Okay, so our application and our services have again successfully redeployed to the cluster. We can see that our partitions are no longer named, so they're using the uniform int64 partitioning. So let's go back to our API endpoint and let's see what happens if we call it. So just to remind ourselves, we need to pass in the int product ID as the query parameter. So product ID one and enter and we'll see if we get back our service name and our partition ID. And as expected, we do. We're hitting partition beginning with 2EE. When we go to 2, we should hit a different partition. A4C. 3, again, should be a different one. AB17. But when we wrap around to 4, we should be hitting the same partition as we did on 1. So it's 2EE and 1, which is also 2EE. So by using this strategy, if our product IDs are evenly distributed and if they're kind of accessed in an evenly distributed manner, we can successfully spread our products across our different partitions, which means that we can spread out the load. A single partition is not being hit for every product. And remember that we can have multiple partitions per node. So if on one node we have five partitions, this is handling requests for five different subsets of our product. But that means we can scale out so we can scale out where we have one partition on every node. So we can get kind of five times more volume and still have the same performance if we scale out that way. So thanks for watching the video on communication between services in Service Fabric. In the next video, we're going to start looking at state management in our stateful services and how the Service Fabric programming model supports this. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more videos on Service Fabric.